So my big question is, is it worth the upgrade? So in this video, I'm gonna highlight 10 things about the GoPro Hero 9 and measure them up against the GoPro Hero 7 and see if it's worth the upgrade. My first ever GoPro was the Hero 3 Plus Black, and that blew my mind. I traveled around with it, and it was amazing. It was a great camera. Two models later, I upgraded to the Hero 5 Black. Time lapses were included, the audio was so much better. It was 4K video, it was mind blowing. It was great, until it broke. Conveniently before the 7 came out. So I upgraded to the Hero 7 Black which is actually one of my more popular videos on this channel where I took it to the Great Barrier Reef and went snorkeling. Hyper smooth, everything on that, it was mind blowing. And so here we are again, two models later, the Hero 9 came out. I just wanted to recap my GoPro experiences before we continue on. You good? Still with me? This is the Hero 9 on an overcast day in Brisbane, Australia. And I really want to test it out against the Hero 7. I'll get more into the details, but here are a few quick shots in comparison. And hopefully this will help you decide on your next purchase. Because let's face it, if you're watching this, you're probably thinking about it. Unless you're here to see my sexy calves. Maybe not. <laughs> All right, so the front screen. The first major design difference is having a front facing screen. I always thought, hey, you know what? It's a GoPro, it's gonna capture me. I don't need to really see myself. I know what it looks like. So I went around Brisbane and tested it out and I love it. I don't even know how I lived without it. Before in the past, I'd shoot with the GoPro Hero 7. I wouldn't notice at first, but then I'd look back and I'd be like, dude, I'm, I'm too dark. So I need to like kind of turn maybe this way. That's a better shot for me talking. So in the past, that would have been a waste of a shot, but now it's nice to be able to see it. Trick is to make sure you look at your lens and not yourself. Looking at the lens, looking at myself. The thing I really want to see is um, whether your eyes are off looking at yourself because most people look at themselves in the screen. The next thing, resolution, this whole 5K resolution thing. As you can tell the way I'm editing this, I'm a big fan of kind of cropping in a little bit in between shots. So having that extra K of resolution will make that even better. Put these cameras side by side and I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to look for yourselves to see how it compares. So they're both set the exact same. I'm just gonna set it down. And this is what it looks like at 50% scale. Now, if we make this 100% scale, you can see the full image side by side. Now, this is zoomed in to 200%. Let's even go to 400%. And why not? 800%. To me, I think that the GoPro Hero 9 actually looks a lot sharper. It looks a lot better. But now, using 5K, does it look that much better zoomed in? GoPro Hero 7 at 4K, 50 frames per second and the GoPro Hero 9 at 5K, 25 frames per second. 50% scale, it looks pretty good. We'll zoom in, 100% scale. 200% scale, we're getting in there. 400% scale. And 800% scale. The 5K actually does look a lot better. All right, so the next thing is time award. Here's the thing, I've never used Time Warp. I never thought I'd need Time Warp. I just put like a time lapse on and walk with it. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Cause here's what it looks like. I was scooting with the GoPro on my helmet with time lapse mode on, terrible. Now look at it with Time Warp. So if you're wanting to do more like walking time lapses and stuff like hyper lapses, uh, Time Warp, wow, I didn't think I was gonna like it, but one of the cool things I didn't know you could do with the GoPro Hero 9 on Time Warp is that as you're doing your hyperlapse or whatever, you can click a button or click the side and actually get it back to normal video. And then you can click it again and it goes back to Time Warp again. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of things I could use with this. So going into Hypersmooth, they both have Hypersmooth, but I wanted to face them off against each other. And so I did a couple comparisons. This is Hypersmooth 
With just normal Hyper Smooth on, the GoPro Hero 9 does a lot better job, especially when I'm running. <laughs> I know that I look like an idiot when I run, but I'm doing this test for you guys. But what shocked me more was Boost. You can add Boost on your Hyper Smooth with just a click of a button. And wow, it does crop the image in a bit, but look at how smooth that is. That is insane. So it is better. Is it worth the upgrade? Actually, I think so. I would use Boost a lot, especially if I was doing something more crazy. I need to go out and do something a little bit more exciting. And I have some ideas. <laughs> the battery was a bit bittersweet for me because they have a bigger battery. Not that much bigger, but big enough. I have like six of these old GoPro Hero batteries and I was kind of bummed that they didn't work in the new one because I have them. So all this test footage that I did, I was shooting like for a few hours. It lasted very long, especially compared to the 7. But with the 7, I had a bunch of extra batteries so it didn't really bother me that much. But don't get me wrong, I will probably buy two or three of these extra batteries just because. But it is nice knowing that the batteries do last a little bit longer. So that's a plus to the GoPro Hero 9. Removable lenses. The Max Mod, I'm definitely gonna get. My sister-in-law's husband flies a plane, like circles and stuff like that. I thought this would be really cool to set up the GoPro with the Max Mod and uh, see what it looks like. So that's gonna happen in the future whenever I get that. But thinking about macro lenses, telephoto lens. Could you imagine a telephoto lens on here? Then you can actually get that really tight shot. Maybe some other lenses that can have like manual focus so you can get some really cinematic shots. There's a lot of possibilities there. So I'm really excited they introduced that. So big plus for that. The bottom mount. I wasn't sure about this, but I, I, lo I love it. I love it. This is so much better than having to carry around a case that can connect to it. It's very smart the way that they did this. And the fact that they made it so that it's collapsible so you can just like sit it down on something. You get a lot of people going, why don't they just put like the screw thread? And I think that the answer to that is because screw thread isn't as strong. And when you're talking action cameras, like these guys are on snowboards and surfboards and they're getting hit by waves. I think that that just one little screw thread isn't enough. Plus I have a ton of mounts already. So, um, and I think a lot of people do too. By the way, great use for this little case that came with the GoPro. Love it. The next thing is the menu and having customizable quick access to different settings. They even give you some preset ones for like 4K cinematic, slow motion, and it's so nice to just click and get to your custom presets or presets that are on there. There's so many, there's so many things to talk about with this. So the next one is a webcam and I did make a whole video about this. There's some pros and cons between the two. The pro is it looks great. Actually, it looks a lot better than the 7. And it plugs in just through USB. And a lot of questions that have been asked were, does it charge as well? And yes, it doesn't use the battery. It, it charges it. It uses the computer power. Now it's GoPro's webcam software that they use. Hopefully they'll have some updates soon for better control. I think they will. I like this one better as a webcam than this one. So much easier. And the final battle to see if it's a better upgrade is the onboard mics. Here's where I want to focus on audio. So uh, right now, I'm gonna switch between the two. Right now, you can hear me from the GoPro Hero 7. And now you'll hear me from the GoPro Hero 9. It is a bit windy. So GoPro Hero 7, here's your sound. GoPro Hero 9, here's your sound. Now, however, I have the media mod that I can plug into the GoPro Hero 7 and it works, so hold on. All right, so now you can hear the difference between the GoPro Hero 7 with an audio microphone connected to it, uh, my Smart Love Plus. Uh, here's a link somewhere up here uh, to how that setup is. And now you can hear it in comparison to the GoPro Hero 9 sound. Uh, yeah, right now, at the beginning, when this first came out, you were able to use this media mod on the Hero 9, but then they did a firmware update and then they uh, lost that ability. So I think they're trying to get more people to buy that media mod that's just for the GoPro Hero 9. To me, I'd rather come back and work because I'd rather just use this media mod, I already have it. What do you think in the comments? Which one do you think sounds better? Plugging that media mod on there, that sounds way better and I'm really hoping the next firmware update allows this to work with that media mod. So there we go. Is it worth the upgrade? This is the tricky question because it really depends on what you wanna use it for. If this is your first time, owning a GoPro, I would say definitely go for the nine. Don't get the seven or the eight, go straight for the nine. It is worth it. As far as upgrading from the seven, I still love the GoPro Hero 7, but the nine is definitely my new favorite. 
Let's just look at all the pros that we just talked about. I think that's enough to say it's worth an upgrade. All these new features, I don't look at them as gimmicks. I look at them as tools to help you keep creating and stay creative. Hope you enjoyed this really long video. If you made it to the end, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, I do try to answer any questions and help out with anything I can help out with. And stay tuned because more videos are gonna be coming out all the time on this channel. Hopefully you like them.